You want a Galaxy phone, and the Galaxy S20 Ultra is pretty tempting, but the Galaxy S10 Plus is so much cheaper. So, which one do you buy? Welcome to More or Less, the show where I compare expensive tech products to their cheaper alternatives, and boy oh boy, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is expensive. It is the most expensive gadget I have ever had on this show, starting at $1,400 in the US. By comparison, last year's S10 Plus starts at $850 US dollars after a price reduction. So whether you are looking to splurge or save a little bit of cash, I'm gonna compare everything about these two phones on cameras, design, performance, and more. So let's get started. If size is important to you, then the S20 Ultra is significantly larger in the pocket than the S10 Plus, 6.9 inches versus 6.4. Now, when you put them side by side, one on top of the other, it doesn't actually look like that much difference. But let me tell you, this is a significantly heavier phone in the pocket. I know what you might be thinking, hey Lexi, you're a lady and you have lady pockets. Correct, I do. So to test this out for the gentleman out there, I found a gentleman with appropriately sized pockets. If you have larger pockets, the S20 Ultra should not present a problem in either the front or the back pocket. It does fit pretty neatly. The S10 Plus by comparison fits pretty nicely in whichever pocket you choose, lady or gentleman. Let's talk screens because another difference between the two, even though they both use dynamic AMOLED screens, is the refresh rate and the resolution. Now, the S20 Ultra comes with a 120 hertz refresh rate, which you can turn on in the settings if you do choose. Now, there are some trade-offs here. Yes, it does affect battery life, which I will talk about later. And yes, you are only effectively getting around a 1080p or HD resolution. However, once you use 120 hertz, it's so hard to go back. It's buttery smooth. I absolutely love it. And going back to 60 hertz on the S10 Plus, you know, it's fine and it does the job and I have zero complaints about it, but it's like my eyes have been opened up to a whole nother world of smooth, smooth silk. In terms of other design cues, you may notice that the S10 Plus has a headphone jack and the S20 Ultra does not. There is also a screen protector installed by default on the S20 Ultra. Now, I've been using it for a few weeks and I've been noticing that it's actually started to lift up a little on the edges. Maybe this is not a huge deal, you can just replace it yourself, but I would expect a pre-installed screen protector to last a little bit longer than a couple weeks before it started lifting off. That said, both of these phones are incredibly delicate, so definitely put a case on them. Do not drop them without a case. Don't worry, we do that for you. So if you wanna check out the drop tests of both of them, check the link in the description. Both of the phones do have reverse wireless charging and an in-screen fingerprint reader, and really I couldn't tell much difference at all between them. The fingerprint reader has definitely gotten a lot better on the S10 Plus over the past year, thanks to a lot of updates, and now they're both pretty much as fast as and responsive as each other. Both of the phones run One UI 2 and Android 10, so effectively they look pretty much the same once you have them up and running. Camera time! Let's take a look at some of the shots because I think that the results of this is quite surprising. Even though the hardware is significantly different, I think most of the general shots of landscapes and people are actually very close. The real differences obviously come when you start to talk about the zoom capabilities on the S20 Ultra with that four times optical zoom that then goes out to a hybrid zoom to 10 times. And then of course you can go to digital all the way to 100 times. Now, comparing a 10 times hybrid zoom from the S20 Ultra to a digital 10 times zoom on the S10 Plus, it's not a pretty picture for the S10 Plus. But if you don't zoom that much, then maybe this isn't a huge point of difference for you. I love the fact that you can get a usable shot up to 30 times on the S20 Ultra. But let's be honest, most of the time I'm not shooting zooms. So for me, the S10 Plus is fine. The ultra-wide cameras are close. There is a little bit more distortion on the S10 Plus. 
and overall portrait mode looks good on both. I think I prefer the shot from the S10 Plus just because it has a little bit more sharpness and a little bit of color, but it is very, very close. And don't forget the S20 Ultra also has that magical 108 megapixel mode with that giant sensor so you can actually crop in a lot more to shots than you can from the 12 or 16 megapixels on the S10 Plus. So you might be thinking the S20 Ultra looks pretty good in the camera department if you are a photographer that really likes to tweak with things, but actually I think I would take the S10 Plus and I'll tell you why, because it has a dual aperture lens, so it can vary between f2.4 and f1.5, so you can change it depending on the lighting conditions if you are in pro mode. By comparison, the aperture on the S20 Ultra cameras is fixed, so if you do want to change that aperture in manual mode, you're kind of out of luck. Selfie time. Okay, so I'm not a huge selfie gal, so I'm gonna leave this one up to you. I think both are totally fine. For video recording, both are good. Now, the S20 Ultra does have the added benefit of being able to shoot in 8K if you wanna future-proof your family memories. It's good to have it, but it's a huge file size. One minute is gonna give you around 600 megabytes of footage, and uh, yeah, you might run out of storage before you run out of things to shoot with 8K. It's nice that it has it, but 4K on the S10 Plus is also great. The only thing that you might run into if you shoot a lot of video on the S20 Ultra is at the time of recording this video, there is a little bit of an autofocus problem with the Phase Detect AF on the S20 Ultra. It just does a lot of hunting. It just doesn't look great. So hopefully a software update will fix that and maybe by the time you watch this, it will be resolved. Let's talk battery. There are so many factors that go into what affects battery life. Now, technically the S20 Ultra does have a larger capacity battery than the S10 Plus, 5,000 milliamp hours versus 4,100 on the cheaper phone. Now, it doesn't necessarily play out that the bigger battery is better because it's all dependent on how you use your phone and connectivity, things like that. Both of these phones will comfortably get you a full day's usage. If you are a heavy user, then maybe you might be pushing it a little bit on the S10 Plus and the S20 Ultra might be worth a little extra cash. However, the S20 Ultra does have a few things that do play into the battery life, such as 120 Hertz. If you do have this active, do not expect to get the same level of battery life that you would if you just were using 60 hertz. I'm not gonna go into benchmarks and performance specs like that. There are plenty of other places that do it a lot better than I could. However, what I will say is that there isn't much that I could throw at either of these phones that they couldn't cope with. Obviously, editing and shooting 8K video is designed for the S20 Ultra. I wouldn't even dream of trying to edit 8K footage on the S10 Plus. Overall, I didn't notice any significant performance differences between the two with everyday tasks. The only thing I noticed was that just the S20 Ultra started up a tiny bit faster than the S10 Plus. Both these phones support super fast charging. The S20 Ultra is faster. However, one thing that is very frustrating about it is that you can only get the fastest charging times if you buy a separate 45 watt charger. The one that's included in the box is not a 45 watt charger. You what, Samsung, I just paid $1,400 for this phone and I still can't charge it as fast as I want to. It's kind of crazy. I don't want to spend another 50 bucks on a charger. So the S10 Plus also has the addition of a one terabyte storage tier. Maybe that's important to you if you shoot a lot of photos and videos. I know that I definitely value that. Of course it ups the price obviously, but the S20 Ultra doesn't give you that option of a one terabyte internal storage option. Yes, they both use micro SD, so you can expand the storage if you like, but the fact that your base storage is 128 and then you can only go to 512, like why, why? This shoots 8K, you need more than 512 if you shoot a lot of 8K, come on. If you do choose to buy the 512 gigabyte version of the Ultra, then you do also get the bump up to 16 gigs of RAM. Very nice. To 5G or not to 5G? That is, is the, the question. question. Whether it is nobler in the mind's eye to suffer the slings and arrows of millimeter wave or, well, mid-band, or live with 4G LTE the outrageous misfortunes of living in New York City or Los Angeles or Chicago on the south side for 5G or suffering the sorrow of 4G LTE. 
The Bard couldn't have written it better himself. So I don't live in an area with 5G connectivity, so I didn't really get to experience it on the S20 Ultra. Let's check the specs. The S20 Ultra has a 6.9 inch Quad HD Plus Dynamic AMOLED with a resolution of 3200 by 1440. The S10 Plus has a 6.4 inch AMOLED with a resolution of 3040 by 1440. The S20 Ultra is 220 grams, whereas the S10 Plus is 175 or 198 if you get the ceramic version. The S20 Ultra runs Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 or Exynos 990, depending on where you are in the world. The S10 Plus is the 8 55 or Exynos 9820. The S20 Ultra has a 5000 milliamp hour battery, whereas the S10 Plus is 4100. And the S20 Ultra has four cameras, a 48 megapixel telephoto, 108 megapixel wide angle, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a depth vision camera. The S10 Plus has a triple camera array, 12 megapixel telephoto, 12 megapixel wide angle, and 16 megapixel ultra wide. Now it comes down to the part of the show where I need to select my overall winner. So, the S20 Ultra is an excellent phone on paper. And I think in practice, once you start using it, it probably gets around 90 to 95% of the way there. I am a little bit let down by the camera. Yes, it is an incredible feat of engineering. I love that you can shoot at 108 megapixels, that you can shoot 8K video. But overall, I don't use zoom that much. So for me, it's not really worth the money for the extra zoom capabilities they do get on this camera. Plus, the autofocus is not 100% there yet. Hopefully, a firmware update will resolve it and it might have fixed it by the time you see this video. I love the screen on the S20 Ultra. It's 120 hertz and it looks fantastic. The battery is incredible and honestly, the performance of this thing, it's a beast and I really do like using it. However, the value proposition is just not quite there for me. So for that reason, I am choosing the Galaxy S10 Plus. For me, it's just a little bit more comfortable to use in the hand than the giant beast of a phone that is the S20 Ultra. I get a great screen. Yeah, sure, I don't get 120 hertz, but I don't think it's worth the extra like $600 for me to upgrade to this just for 120. And the cameras are also great on the S10 Plus. I don't need 108 megapixels of resolution and I don't need that zoom. I love it that I could have it, but for me, it's not worth all that cash. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Give it a thumbs up and a like if you did. And let me know if you have any questions that I didn't answer. I make this show for you, so let me know. Check out some more related content, including an episode of more or less about earbuds and something else down there. Bye.